This will be the first episode of my new Ineos Rebuild series, and in this specific episode, I'm going to be answering the questions, why Roberto De Zerbi would be my choice to replace Eric Ten Hag this summer, what is the difference between a manager and a head coach, as well as what other topics I'll be analysing throughout this series. So now that it's April, I think it's the appropriate time to start my full Ineos Rebuild series, where I'll be given my definitive plan for what Ineos should look to do this summer, including who the next manager or head coach should be, how the new backroom staff such as Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, Dave Browsford, and any other new members should be structured, and of course what I would look to do in terms of first team recruitment as well as the youth development as well. For the sake of this video series, assume that I'm like the director of football at Ineos, overseeing the entire rebuild of United, I think Sir Dave Browsford is kind of in this role at the moment as he's currently director of Ineos Sport, but he isn't a specialist in football, so I'm going to come on to his unique role that he would play at United in a future episode. Now I'm going to start off by telling you who my new Manchester United manager would be, or should I say head coach? before I explain exactly why I'm making this particular distinction, but before that, if you like me prefer the old school retro jerseys to the new season ones, head over to Jersey FIFA, you can check out all their Manchester United retro jerseys through the 90s and 2000s, as well as jerseys from other club and international sides as well. You can use code Atlantis at checkout for a discount, a link will be in my Instagram bio, which I will leave linked in the description. So who do I want as the head coach of Manchester United? Well, my first choice would be Roberto De Zerbi. He does have a 13 million pound release clause which i think would make him the third most expensive manager or head coach of all time still some way behind the top two of nagelsmann to buy in at around 21 million pounds and graham potter to chelsea for 21.5 million pounds and just ahead of the likes of brendan rogers and andre villas boas at around 11 million pounds however i think deserby is worth it if you watch the manchester united brentford game on saturday and then the brighton liverpool game on sunday you surely saw the difference in how good a tactician deserby is compared to Ten Hag, and this was seen particularly with both sides' build-up strategies. Despite Brighton not having what you deem elite level players, they have a system and patterns of play that enable them to play out one of the most aggressive presses in the Premier League, taking risks that don't always come off, largely due to the technical ability and pass selection of individual players, but because the Zerbi system is so well designed and trained, Brighton are still able to play out of the defensive third into the middle third and do so in an incredibly effective, attractive and entertaining way. Ten Hogs United, on the other hand, seem to have no coherent strategy when playing out of their defensive third under pressure. With Ten Hag's positional setup in the build-up phase being one that wants to go long from Onana, with the centre-backs remaining in higher positions close to the edge of the box, rather than dropping deep closer to the byline in order to create a back three and give Onana those shorter passing options, and closing the distance between individual players in the defensive third. The reason United can't play out of a press or sustain possession for long periods is not because of individual players like Bruno Fernandes, Wan-Bissaka or Harry Maguire, but because of Ten Hag's possession shape not positioning players properly to enable them to play out of pressure and so subsequently they have to use a quicker transitional style of play which leads to United constantly looking for those direct vertical passes forward because they can't break down deep compact defensive shapes which whilst undoubtedly being their best avenue to go with the pace of Garnacho, Hoyland and Rashford in behind, alongside the vision and ability to play through balls and passes over the top of Bruno Fernandes, it does lead to constant turnovers in possession and ends up with United playing a style of football closer to Thomas Frank's Brentford than the possession brand of football that we initially thought we were getting with Ten Hag, an absolute miles away from how Roberto De Zerbi would set up these same Manchester United players. But De Zerbi not only solves United's issues in build-up, arguably having the best build-up system in world football at the moment, but he'd also solve United's pressing and defensive issues as well. With De Zerbi's 4-4-2 pressing and defensive shapes both in the final and the middle third, being a lot more vertically and horizontally compact than Ten Hag's, with De Zerbi's defensive shape not vacating vast amounts of space between the midfield and defensive lines. People may defend Ten Hag and say it's purely personnel driven, because he just doesn't have the players to play a high line and is forced to play a deeper line in response. However, this just isn't the case, as a back four of Dalov, Varane, Lindelof and Wan-Bissaka, which was a setup for Brentford, is far better equipped to play a high line than De Zerbi's high back line of Dunk, Van Hecker, Estupinan and Veltman. It's just that De Zerbi has extreme confidence in his high pressing system. And my point is proven even more when you factor in that De Zerbi's Brighton were coming up against quicker Liverpool forwards in Diaz, Nunes and Salah, whereas United's back line were coming up against Wissa and Tony. 
And Ten Hag just doesn't have confidence in his own pressing system, which is the ultimate reason for Ten Hag's press being so disjointed. You can't have a back line playing like a passive side who want to sit deep and cut off space in behind, alongside a front and midfield line who want to press extremely aggressively from the front. It's just not going to work. And even when Lissandro Martinez and Mason Mount came on, this didn't really change. With the Zerbi's Brighton, however, you can clearly see a defined system of play, with the players, despite being mid-level Premier League players in all fairness, still being able to combine immaculately at times and completely cut through a high press. And in another episode, I'll be analysing exactly how De Zerbi's artificial counter-attacks can actually get the best out of Rashford, Garnacho, Hoyland and Bruno Fernandes, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for that video. But in terms of De Zerbi v Ten Hag, unless you're going off the sort of talk sport level of knowledge, the criteria of what has he done in football, where people just go to Wikipedia and look at the trophies a manager has won before deciding who is better, you have to say that Roberto De Zerbi is a level above most managers, Eric Ten Hag included, specifically from a tactical point of view. Now people may say, but a manager isn't just about being a tactician, which I agree, but it's at least 90% of what makes a successful manager, or should I say what makes a successful head coach, because this is where we come on to why I would define Deserby as a head coach instead of a manager. Well, in simple terms, a manager has a lot more control over the decisions at a club. Managers like Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, or even current managers like Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp and Diego Simeone to a lesser degree, have a wide-ranging influence over football decisions such as the development path from youth teams to first team, player recruitment and the long-term vision of the club, whereas a head coach's responsibilities are a lot more isolated and limited. And this means that rather than having De Zerbi heavily involved in the player recruitment side of things, that will be the job of Dan Ashworth and whoever is put in the row underneath him as essentially a head of recruitment and in a future episode I'll discuss who would be my first choice for that role. De Zerbi, of course, will still be consulted with on which players to eventually bring into the club for a given role or roles in his side, but he won't be going to the higher-ups with players' suggestions, most of the time anyway, as there will, of course, be some exceptions. Nor will De Zerbi be tasked with identifying players from the youth setup who in the future could be first-team players for United. That will be the job of maybe a technical director like Jason Wilcox, and whoever the head of youth development or the academy is, currently it's Nick Cox. The development path from the under-18s, under-20, ones, loan spells and into the first team, needs to be a lot more effective at getting players ready to either play for United or be moved on for significant transfer fees, which arguably is the main problem area of the club that United need to improve. And so De Zerbi will be able to primarily focus on on the pitch things, training and the overall development of the first team players, and building an effective system to eventually challenge and win titles. Given that Roberto De Zerbi alongside Nagelsmann, Motta, Pep and Arteta is currently at the forefront of the tactical development of elite level football, I think the role of head coach rather than as manager maximises his best attributes and takes responsibilities off of his plate, allowing him to focus purely on getting results on the pitch. However, of course I understand that whilst a lot of you may agree with me in terms of replacing Ten Hag at the end of the season, you may not still be convinced by Roberto De Zerbi. And so in the next episode, I'll be explaining my decision as to why I'm going for De Zerbi over the likes of Nagelsmann, Inzaghi, Mota and Unai Emery, who were my top five options for the role. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when that video comes out. You can also check out some of my other videos, which will be linked in the description below.